Now picture this. You're watching a volcano erupt, which is a scary view by itself. But suddenly, you notice ominous bright flashes lighting up the sky over the volcano. It takes the nightmarishness of the experience to a whole new level. One causes static electricity, which occurs when dense ash particles rub together not very high above the ground. The other source of volcanic lightning is high above the surface, near the stratosphere, where chaotically moving ice crystals set free powerful jolts. Salar del Uni feels like you're standing on top of a large mirror, but it's actually a salt flat of more than 4,000 square miles. It's located in Bolivia, South America's highest elevated country. This natural mirror is a remnant of prehistoric lakes that had evaporated a long time ago. Even though it may look flat, GPS technology proved that some of the landscape has some little defaults that are all less than an inch small. The place is so bogged that it has around 10 billion tons of salt. If you get there at the right time, some of the nearby lakes overflow with a small layer of water, which acts as the mirror of the sky. Many locals extract salt and lithium from there. Don't forget to pass by the world's first salt hotel when you visit. You can find a real rainbow mountain in Peru. Scientists still can't explain it. The colorful peak is hard to reach, but seeing the blue, red, green, yellow, and pink colors in nature is something to remember. Now, what looks like frozen flying saucers is, in fact, pockets of highly flammable and combustible methane gas. Trapped underwater, it forms psychedelic landscapes and stunning patterns. Typical for northern lakes, such as Lake Abraham in Alberta, Canada, these bubbles appear when dead animals, leaves, and plants fall into the water and get consumed by bacteria. These bacteria later excrete methane gas. Wow, I can smell it from here! In late March 2018, Eastern Europe witnessed an event as beautiful as it was spooky. Skiers glided down tangerine slopes under the red-tinted sky. Puzzled and excited, people describe this experience as walking on Mars or skiing down sand dunes. But however mysterious this phenomenon seems, it has a disappointingly simple explanation. The sponsor of the extraterrestrial landscape was a powerful sandstorm that had arrived from the Sahara Desert. This storm had brought along dust, sand, and pollen particles that colored the snow orange. It's not a one-time natural phenomenon. Meteorologists say that orange snow covers the lands of Eastern Europe at least once every five years. Meanwhile, don't eat the orange snow. On February 20th and 21st of 2018, people in the northeastern part of the U.S. experienced one of the most extraordinary weather events of recent times, and it was a heat wave. Yep, in February. In fact, it was the most impressive winter heat wave since official weather records started in the 1800s. For example, in Freiburg, Maine, people were taking off their coats after the temperature had risen to a baffling 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In Fitchburg, Massachusetts, confused people put on sandals when they saw the temperature outside 80 degrees. The same was happening in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where the temperature reached 83, and in Wells, Maine, where the thermometer showed 77 degrees. Now, around 11,000 years ago, in present-day Turkey, with no cities or metal tools whatsoever, some incredibly skilled craftsmen completed Gobikli Tepe, how they managed to chip and lift limestone blocks three times as heavy as a T-Rex, and what they symbolize is still unknown. Ooh. One mind-blowing fact about Devil's Tower in Wyoming, USA, is that scientists can't explain how it came to existence in the first place. You see, it's an 867-foot rock formation with walls so steep they're basically vertical. This piece of stone just arose amid the rolling plains of Wyoming with nothing like it for miles and miles around. So how is it that such a flat landscape could have suddenly given birth to something so tall? Theories abound, but nobody has the answer yet. Croatia's Pletvica Lakes National Park is a major tourist attraction and a world heritage site, with many unique animals and plants teeming around. It looks like an epic movie set, with infinite waterfalls flowing from every direction and the clear lakes all around. In the mid-1980s, a scuba diver discovered the Yanaguni Monument off the coast of Japan. 
Scientists are positive this collection of structures is thousands of years old, but they still can't decide if it's natural or man-made. In case it proves to be an ancient city, the new mystery is what lost civilization built it and how did it make it to the bottom of the sea? The shape and formations of these rocks aren't a result of some human's work. They were created by intense volcanic eruptions. Scientists are still confused why the Giant's Causeway in Ireland is shaped in such a weird way. Back in 1812, for an unknown reason, an English farmer paid a local painter to remove tons of soil on a hillside and fill the contours with chalk. The painter ran away with the money, so the farmer had to pay a second time to get the Alton Barn's white horse finished. Black Falls in Iceland get their name from the dark lava columns surrounding it. The base of the waterfall has sharp rocks. The entire structure was the inspiration for Icelandic architecture seen in some of their famous buildings. You can see hair ice in the forest on a humid winter night. Resembling cotton candy or a white hair wig, unusual ice crystals grow on rotting wood. Unfortunately, this beauty melts as soon as the sun comes up. Only recently have scientists discovered what creates hair ice. All this time it was, are you ready? Fungus. Yep. It allows the ice to form super thin hairs and helps them to support this form throughout the night. When this particular type of fungus isn't present, instead of fragile hair, ice forms a crust-like structure. Now, one of the most common causes of wildfires is lightning from thunderstorms. But have you ever heard of a wildfire that triggered a thunderstorm? Well, now you know. It happened on May 11, 2018, not far from Amarillo, Texas. Then, the super-powerful Mallard Fire not only created a massive dense cloud high in the air, its heat also caused a violent thunderstorm that later dumped tons of quarter-sized hailstones 60 miles away in Wheeler County, Texas. Carhenge is the weirdest landmark of Nebraska. Its author studied the real Stonehenge and created his own version out of old cars as a tribute to his father. Some cars stand like monoliths. Others are connected into arches. When asked why he did all this, the creator of the construction said, why not? Another Stonehenge lookalike was found on the bottom of Lake Michigan in 2007. There's a group of rocks in a circle and carvings of a mastodon. This beast ceased existing over 10,000 years ago, so the carving has to be older than that. Its location is kept secret from the public. Good luck finding it! Canada's Hudson Bay is probably the only place in the world where gravity is indeed lower than anywhere else on the planet. Even skeptics can't smirk at it because the difference has been measured with precision equipment. So does it mean that the gravity here is as low as, say, on the moon? Eh, unfortunately, or is it luckily, I'm not sure yet. The difference is minuscule. The exact value is 0.005 or 1 200th of a percent. You won't be able to feel it even if you try your hardest, but it's still there. Scientists say this anomaly exists because of the ice sheet that covered the area about 10,000 years ago. It compressed the rocks so much that they still can't fully recover, shifting the gravitational field in Hudson Bay. Sometime in the future, though, the gravity will return to normal in this area as well. In 2010, fossilized fish were uncovered 250 miles west of the Nile River, where the Sahara Desert was as arid as ever. This chance finding led scientists to believe there could have been a sea where the Sierra is now. So they conducted a geological survey of the area, and it yielded unexpected results. They found evidence of something huge under the sands, and it wasn't part of any sea at all. For several months, the research continued with GPS equipment on land, and later, when all the ground data was collected, scientists took a look at the area from a satellite. The view was astounding. It turned out there was an enormous basin underneath the desert, with another, smaller one nearby. Along the shores of these basins, ancient human settlements had been found previously, and now the researchers finally had the answer as to why exactly they had chosen those spots to live there had been a lake of impressive proportions. Over 42,000 square miles of fresh water in total, 
about half the size of Lake Michigan. You're taking a stroll on a warm summer afternoon. The grass is green, the sun is in the sky, and suddenly, you feel yourself sinking. You begin to panic, but then immediately you bounce back up. You test your footing and jump slightly. The grass bounces with you, like a trampoline. This phenomenon is caused by soil liquefaction. Excess water from heavy rain or floods becomes trapped in the soil, causing it to be waterlogged. This makes the ground temporarily act like a giant waterbed. While it may be tempting to run and bounce on this springy grass, it's best to tread carefully. The grass could potentially break open, and if someone fell through, it would be incredibly tricky for them to get back out again. An erupting volcano is already a pretty terrifying sight, with clouds of dark smoke and flowing molten hot lava. What's even more terrifying is that they can produce lightning. Volcanic lightning is pretty hard to study, so scientists don't know exactly what causes it. A common theory is that during an eruption, the ash picks up so much friction that it creates a buildup of static electricity. This static electricity then triggers the volcanic lightning. A fire whirl, or fire tornado, is exactly what it sounds like. They occur when ground winds pick up flames and escalate the embers into a whirling force. These spinning columns of fire can reach up to 1,000 feet tall, but luckily, they only last for a couple of minutes. Fire tornadoes are pretty rare, but they can be extremely dangerous. In Tokyo in 1923, a large citywide fire produced a gigantic fire tornado. The tornado lasted 15 minutes and devastated the city, causing significant damage and leaving 38,000 people injured. On a cold and cloudless winter night, you might have been lucky enough to witness colorful beams of blue and orange light reaching up towards the sky. These are called light pillars. They occur when light is reflected from tiny ice crystals that float about in the atmosphere. These pillars are more common in cold, northern countries like Canada or Russia. We've all seen the colorful rainbow arches that the sun produces. It's much rarer to see a rainbow light up in the sky, produced by the moon. This is called a moonbow. It's bright and colorful like a rainbow and occurs when moonlight reflects off water droplets in the sky. Moonbows are incredibly rare and can only occur in specific conditions. The moon must be very low, the sky has to be dark, and rain must fall directly opposite from the moon to create this lunar rainbow. If you're taking a moonlit stroll along the beach at night, you might come across the strange phenomena of a bioluminescent beach. This occurs when a microorganism in the water called plankton are agitated by the movement of the waves and give off a bright blue color. These microorganisms tend to live in warmer waters, so you can find these luminescent beaches in places like the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and even Florida. In Antarctica, you'll find the famous Blood Falls. Blood red colored water pours out of the Taylor Glacier from an underground lake. Scientists originally believed that the striking color was caused by a microorganism, similar to the luminescent beaches glowing plankton. But after further studies, it was discovered that the water has abnormally high levels of iron that oxidize and turn to rust the second they hit fresh air. In colder climates where lakes are frozen all year round, if you look pretty closely beneath the icy waters, you'll notice frozen bubbles trapped in the ice. These are small pockets of methane gas. Bacteria in the water feast on other organisms and digest them to produce methane. The methane turns into floating bubbles in the frozen water, trapped beneath layers of ice. Asparatus clouds are one of the rarest events in nature. This cloud formation consists of incredibly dark and storm-like waves of clouds. Although these clouds appear ominous and look like they carry a heavy storm, they usually dissipate without ever affecting the weather. These clouds most commonly appear in the Great Plains of the United States, but they haven't been observed since 2009. Despite being a famously harsh climate, the desert can produce some beautiful things, like desert roses. These are intricate rose-like formations of crystal clusters. The intense switch between dry and wet conditions forms the crystals and traps grains of sand within them to give them their signature color. From afar, you could easily mistake a water spout as a large tornado traveling over a body of water. In reality, water spouts are a type of funnel-shaped cloud. They are rotating columns of cloud-filled wind which often take on a darker color. Water spouts are much weaker and smaller than tornadoes, and they aren't strong enough to suck anything into them. This phenomenon typically occurs in tropical climates, and they usually dissipate before reaching land. 
Lenticular clouds are flat clouds that lay on top of the other, looking like stacks of pancakes in the sky. They typically form in high altitudes where geographic features like mountains or tall buildings interrupt the airflow. Because of their unique shape, lenticular clouds have been suggested as an explanation for some UFO sightings. As our climate changes, new natural phenomena develop. One of these is exploding permafrost. The increasing temperature in Arctic zones is causing the permafrost to melt. Just like in frozen lakes, bubbles of methane gas are trapped in the permafrost. As the permafrost begins to melt, the gas is released. This results in large explosions in the ground, which leave behind massive holes. The first case of this was reported in 2013, and several more have been reported since. When you think of icebergs, you usually think of a large chunk of pristine white ice. But in Antarctica, you find icebergs striped with colors of green, blue, yellow, and more. The different colors are caused due to the ice forming in special conditions. Green typically appears when water that is rich in algae freezes. Blue stripes are more often freshly frozen water. Other colors are typically caused by sediments of debris picked up by the water as it freezes. Nacreous clouds are some of the rarest clouds on the planet. They typically occur at high altitudes and are only visible within two hours after sunset. The clouds appear beautiful as they display light waves of various colors. But don't be fooled, these clouds are actually a pretty dangerous sight. Nacreous clouds are incredibly destructive to our atmosphere. Their presence encourages the chemical reaction that breaks down our ozone layer. The ozone layer is an essential shield protecting us from the sun's harmful rays. The more depleted it is, the more at risk we are of global warming. The last place you might expect to find a natural fire is in the middle of a waterfall, but it's more common than you think. In upstate New York, in the middle of a small running waterfall is an eternal flame around 8 inches tall. Beneath the waterfall is a natural gas seep, a low pressure of gas that escapes from underground into the Earth's atmosphere. The small fire is sheltered enough by rocks from the waterfall's spray to stay lit permanently. Typically, green sand isn't what you'd imagine when you think of tropical beaches, but in Hawaii and other volcanic islands around the globe, you'll find beaches covered with dark green sand. This remarkable color is due to the erosion of olivine, a type of rock formed by nearby volcanic eruptions. Over the years, the rock slowly withers into sand and washes onto the shore, resulting in these strange colored beaches. Penitentes are fields of ice spikes formed in high altitudes. These occur when sunlight beams directly onto ice, turning it into water vapor rather than melting them. The sunbeams vaporize small dimples in the snow surface, resulting in sharp crystal-like formations. The spike can grow as tall as 15 feet. Mammatus clouds are some of the most unusual and distinctive formations of clouds. The clouds can extend over hundreds of miles and appear like the sky has been blanketed with cotton balls. The clouds themselves are harmless, but they often signify that a dangerous storm is nearby. So if you see them, head inside. A green flash sunset is a rare phenomenon that occurs briefly at sunset, or sunrise, when the sun is almost entirely out of the sky. In the right conditions, onlookers can witness a distinct green flash, making the sun appear bright green. This is caused by sunlight reflecting off the Earth's atmosphere, causing the light to refract into different colors. The sun appears green, but really, it's just an optical illusion. You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches crackling under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some kind. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep into the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So, you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing here in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So, maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is a staircase? But, weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. 
It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay? You and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others of brick or stone. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere. And they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that lead to a tiny platform at the top. Now, why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some scientists think it could have been some sort of ritual tower. But your guess is as good as theirs. There's an anomaly in the Indian Ocean known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or IOGL. It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually mean denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that is working its way up to the crust. The Nihau Island actually rejects the fruits of today's advancements. There are no cars in sight since the locals get around on foot or by bicycles. No wonder their legs have great definition. They thrive without running water, internet, or shops. The only school on the entire island is powered by solar energy with a backup generator. And what's awesome is that it's the only school in the state that's powered by the sun. Being a resident of the island, the local explains some ground rules the permanent residents must abide by. If they do break these rules, they can be evicted. Now, not far from Bangkok, in northeastern Thailand, there's a 75 million year old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert. But the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and an abundance of fauna and flora there. Located on Gamal and Gaiden peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. The pits grow wider, and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water molecules after the planet's permafrost started to melt. This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure. You're driving to the state of New Mexico, to the small town of Taos. 2% of the locals hear a strange buzzing in the air every day. Some residents believe the sound is somehow connected with technologies used by guests from other galaxies. Ooh. Also, there is a theory that something sinister lives in the town. They say Taos is cursed. An evil spirit or a phantom punishes people for something their ancestors did in the past. Scientists still can't explain the nature of this sound. Another theory says it's caused by unusual acoustics of the location. 
while others think the buzzing is a hallucination. Some can hear it because everybody talks about something, and our minds create an illusion of the sound that doesn't really exist. The sound isn't the same for everyone, either. For some, it's a low hum. For others, it's more of a buzzing sound. But this is not the only place where you can hear the strange noises. It's called the hum, and people worldwide claim to have heard it. Some dwellers of a small village in Scotland describe it as a low, thick hum. Well, some residents of Florida heard a similar sound, too. It's not exactly known where this phenomenon appeared. But the first time the media started talking about it was in the 1970s in England. Also, there are written records of a mysterious buzzing dating back almost 200 years. According to some estimates, only about 2% of people on the planet can hear the hum. Perhaps their ears pick up some low-frequency waves, or the reason is something else entirely. Maybe, just maybe, they hear humming because the person doing it doesn't know the words to the song. Yeah, that joke is also 200 years old. A volcano in Indonesia spews bright blue lava and produces electric blue and purple flames. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano has some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. You can also know you're near it by its foul stench. But I digress. And when sulfuric gases interact with scorching hot air and get lit by the molten lava, they turn blue. You can also find the world's largest acid lake inside this crater. Yep, it's a real stinker. Underwater rivers and lakes are called brine pools for a reason. High salinity makes the water in them denser than the seawater around. That's why it sinks to the bottom, forming rivers and lakes. Those have waves of their own, and these waves can sometimes lap up against the shorelines. If you went down there in the submarine, it would easily float on the surface of a brine pool. But without a submarine, swimming in such a lake would be too risky. They contain too much toxic methane and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, I'd pass on that too. But hey, be my guest! Cave of Crystals in Mexico is home to the world's most unique crystal formations. Thanks to super-rare conditions in the cave, crystals there grow to unbelievable sizes. The air inside is incredibly humid. The water contains tons of minerals that boost the growth of the Milky White giants. Some of them are longer than telephone poles. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust starts to roll some snow across a snowy area, as if making a snowball. If it was a real thing, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But a snow donut center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes the thing lighter than a snowball. That's also why it rolls further. Unfortunately, snow donuts are rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. The Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is probably one of the most bizarre-looking places you'll ever see. It's dotted with neon-colored hot springs, lava pools, and vast salt flats. You've got to be especially careful there. Toxic gases are swirling over hydrothermal fields, and many pools are super acidic. So, mm, don't go swimming. Until at least 30 minutes after lunch. (laughs) Just kidding. And finally, there's nothing mysterious about 28,000 rubber ducks found in the sea in 1992. That's when a ship transporting bath toys got lost in the ocean while traveling from Hong Kong to the U.S. Some of these ducks are still floating in the ocean several decades later. They've been spotted in South America, Alaska, Hawaii, and even Australia. And they make bath time lots of fun. Ooh, rubber ducky. Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting, or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. 
The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white, and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, they need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands, similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower, just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction, and ta-da! You get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, It turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? (laughs) Well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand, trapping them and forming a rose-like shape. Ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the rainbow eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. 
Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret – a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common. But this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papakolia, also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton, or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. When the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes. Scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay. You're in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile, one of the driest places on Earth. But this desert has a beautiful secret. Every three to five years, flowers pop up out of nowhere. It's so famous, it's also called the flowering desert. Seeds lie around in the ground just waiting for some rain. When the desert gets enough water, about 200 types of flowers sprout up. The yellow sands of the Atacama turn purple, white, green, and even pink. Another mystical phenomenon that can be seen in the desert is called a sand waterfall. When the wind brings a lot of sand to the edge of the canyon, it begins to fall down. Now amplify this effect 100 times and you get a sand waterfall in Saudi Arabia. It really is like Niagara Falls, only there's not a drop of water. The locals say this phenomenon warns of an impending sandstorm. Fairy rings, also known as elf rings or pixie rings, are mysterious circles of mushrooms that appear in grasslands and forested areas. There's a lot of debate about why these fairy rings form a nearly perfect circle. Some superstitions claim that fairy dances would burn the ground, causing mushrooms to rapidly grow. In southern India, between July and September 2001, people witnessed one of the strangest weather phenomena in recorded history. The rain was red. What many would have thought to be a typical rainstorm left them shot. The color was bright enough to stain clothes. There were other colors too, such as green, yellow, brown, and even black. In the middle of a monsoon, red rain started to fall, and so did periodically for several weeks. Researchers have found this unusual rain is stained either by dust or algae, so don't try to catch any on your tongue. Scientists aren't entirely sure how the algae got all the way up there. This does make events like this a little unsettling. 
Now, people who live in rural central Norway over the Hestalen Valley can often witness floating lights of white, yellow, and red cross the sky. The lights appear both at day and night, and once back in the 80s, <clears throat> the 1980s, they were spotted 15 to 20 times in a single week. The Hestalen lights can last just a few seconds, but sometimes they can last more than an hour. The lights move, seeming to float or even sway around. Some scientists believe that the reason for these lights is due to ionized iron dust. Others say it's a combination that includes sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Many people claim they're just misidentified aircrafts. Norway! Snow donuts are one of the rarest meteorological sites to see, with perfect weather conditions needed just to create them. Found in any snow-covered mountain area, like the Rocky Mountains, the wind, temperature, snow, ice, and moisture all have to work together for us to see these phenomenal rings. A thin layer of wet snow on the ground. Under that layer, ice or powdered snow. Then, a strong enough breeze to roll the donut down a hill, just like a snowball. Once it stops rolling, it can be the size of a baseball or as large as a car tire. It all depends on how strong the wind is. A newly formed snow donut won't stay around for very long, so hurry up with that camera and watch your head. Can you believe there's another place on Earth with its own ecosystem and atmosphere, similar to another planet? Well, start believing. Movil Cave, located in southeastern Romania, remained closed in complete darkness for a whopping 5.5 million years. It wasn't until workers discovered the cave, when they were looking for a place to build, that anyone learned about it. Scientists carved out an opening to the cave and found that a completely sustained ecosystem was thriving inside. As a pathway was carved through the rock past numerous tunnels, scientists found a lake of sulfuric water that stank like rotten eggs. The air was filled with hydrogen sulfide and had 100 times more carbon dioxide than Earth's atmosphere contains. Needless to say, this air is completely toxic. What's even crazier is that a whole ecosystem has been existing in this cave, with 33 species that can't be found anywhere else on Earth. This cave gives us a glimpse of what could possibly exist on other planets with completely different atmospheres. How it managed to exist on Earth all this time without anyone knowing is rather unbelievable, isn't it? Now, check these trees out. They're called Indian rubber trees. Their strong roots grow not underground, but on the surface. With the help of special frames and fasteners, people have learned to control how these roots grow. Let's say a tree is next to a small pit. You need to make a bridge from one end of this pit to the other. You direct the growing tree roots in the needed direction. Over time, the roots penetrate the ground and strengthen under endless downpours. It takes about 15 years to create one bridge. Here's another amazing tree called the Tree of Light. It grows in Bahrain's desert. The tree has been standing on top of this sandy hill for more than 400 years, surrounded by miles of sand. It's extremely hot here, and there's no moisture. But despite this, the tree has green leaves, and it continues to grow. So far, scientists haven't figured out yet how the tree gets moisture and nutrients. There are only places with oil deposits around. Locals think the tree is sacred. After all, it demonstrates the magic of life and the power of nature. Some experts are sure it's all about the roots. They go so deep that they can reach underground sources of water. So, there you are. You've been driving for hours through the night. You didn't have any chance to sleep, so your mind is hanging by a thread. You stop the car and go out to stretch your limbs. And then you look up into the sky and see a beautiful sunrise. Whoa, wait, there are three suns in the sky. You rub your eyes, but nope, there are still three bright stars in the sky. No, our home star hasn't been torn into three pieces, nor has it been visited by two other stars. This is called a sun dog. It occurs mostly during severe frosts. Small ice crystals in the sky bend the light. As a result, you may see three bright spots in the sky instead of just one. This phenomenon is officially called a halo. Usually, it's just a circle around the sun. You can even see a halo at night, too. Just look at a street lamp, and you'll see a bright circle around it. Sometimes, a halo can take on a fancier shape. If there's a lot of ice in the air, the light is warped even more. 
just like in a room with a dozen mirrors, then the halo can take on the shape of a human eye. Because of this phenomenon, a false dawn can also occur. While you're looking at the horizon, the dawn begins and the edge of the sun appears. A little bit more and, wait, the sun starts to just dissolve in the sky. After a few moments, it's dark again. And only a minute later, the real sun shows its face. It was the same light curvature effect you saw before with the three suns. Only now, the light is curved vertically, not horizontally. And instead of the real sun, its reflection in ice crystals in the sky appeared. But the sunrise with three stars on the horizon is actually real. Not on Earth, though, but 340 light years away. There's a star system at the center of which lurks a star almost twice the size of the sun. And there are two smaller stars orbiting around this giant. This strange world has a planet, too. Sunsets and dawns there really happen with three stars. If you brought your significant other to a park bench to watch a sunset here, your date would go just fine. Whatever that means. And since we're talking about the most baffling natural phenomena, it would be a crime not to mention snow in a desert. Yep, in the winter of 2018, the inhabitants of the Sahara Desert, one of the driest and hottest places on this planet, woke up to discover a thick blanket of snow covering the sand. In some places, the layer of snow enveloping the dunes reached a staggering 15 inches. Meteorologists, however, had an explanation for this exciting phenomenon. They stated that cold pools of air, combined with the precipitation from the most recent storm, resulted in a snowfall instead of rain. So, what do you do in that case? Build snow camels? Hmm, one hump or two. <laughs>